Anthony Gormley's show Information at White Cube Mason's Yard introduces two new sculptural languages. Here on the ground floor there are four massive stacked block works, perhaps the most reductive and radical block works that Gormley's made yet. And they're constructed exactly as they appear, these massive blocks of cast iron stacked individually one on the other, their forces and masses acting upon each other to keep them in balance. If you think back to the, the architecture of the ancient world, those massive carved figures, the caryatids and telamons that form part of the supporting architecture, Gormley's figures too are sculptural forms given their context by the architecture, but perhaps we should call them reverse caryatids because rather than supporting the architecture, they're, they're slumping and leaning against the walls. Gormley animates the figures, it gives, gives them very human attitudes, so one presses its upper body and arms against the wall, another buries its head and its forearms, another presses only its forearms against the wall, so its body forms a kind of flying buttress standing clear of the, of the architecture. If you examine the surfaces of the blocks, you can see that the bandsaw cut from blocks of polystyrene, the, the grain is still visible, those individual blocks are cast in a box of river sand which is vibrated and then placed under vacuum so it becomes a, a, a rigid mold. And as the molten metal is poured in, there's, a, there's an almost instantaneous transformation of that very flimsy material to iron, that metal which is associated with industry but is also an elemental material which comes from the earth and, and forms the molten core of our planet. As the blocks emerge from the sand, they're, they're not treated in any way. They, they emerge raw as you see them with places where you can discern how the, the silica of the sand has fused under the intense heat of the process and it gives them this remarkable organic quality. So in each of the works in this gallery, we see a human form in relation to a block, a, a formless mass. So balancing, grappling, tussling, perhaps emerging from it or, or merging back into it. Um, one reference point here is Michelangelo's slaves, those muscular figures which uh, emerge from the raw stone and are still imprisoned by it. But by uh, constructing his figures from these aggregated blocks, these materialized pixels, if you like, um, Gormley's connecting them as well to our digital age. He's titled the show In Formation, an allusion to process, to, a, to an instability of form, a becoming, and contained in that too, of course, is information. Perhaps another suggestion that the, the translation that we're concerned with here is that between information and matter, matter and information. We can find in these sculptures references to human time, back to, to antiquity, to the classical, to the present, and even to a kind of uh, dematerialized digital future and also to geological time, if we consider not only the elemental material, the iron, but the idea that these aggregated forms echo a type of growth that's found in nature, in, in cell and crystalline growth. Hung here in relation to the sculptures are a series of watercolours, which offer, if you like, a, a window out of the gallery and suggest microscopic and cosmic forms. With a Chinese brush, he touches the ink on the paper. There's a play between chance and control in the way the paper takes the ink. Our final encounter is with the lone work stem, again assembled from loose cast blocks stacked together. Uh, this is a work that Gormley is referred to as his reply to Rodin's thinker for the Anthropocene era. Thinker now collapsed into a more, more dejected or defeated attitude on its forearms. From the rear aspect, this cubist minimal form has a rigorous symmetry which is satisfying in itself, but uh, another dimension is revealed as you discern the figure and understand its emotional potential. These sculptures are largely cast inside a minute. They either succeed or they fail. There are no additions. They're absolute, immediate, yet in that instant, they take on a form which could survive for a thousand years.